We often talk about how traditional computing is reaching its limit. There's a threshold we can't move past without making some seriously big changes to the way we structure computers. One of those exciting ways is by making physical computers a little more like human brains. We introduced this concept in more detail here, but a quick recap, this kind of computing is called neuromorphic computing, which means designing and engineering computer chips that use the same physics of computation used by our own nervous system. This is different from an artificial neural network, which is a program run on a normal computer that mimics the logic of how a human brain thinks. Neuromorphic computing, the hardware version, and neural networks, the software version, can work together because as we make progress in both fields, neuromorphic hardware will probably be the best option to run neural networks on. But for this video, we're gonna focus on neuromorphic computing and the really exciting strides that have been made in this field in the past year. See, traditional computers think in binary. Everything is either a one or a zero, a yes or a no. You only have two options, so the code we use and the questions we ask these kinds of computers must be structured in a really rigid way. Neuromorphic computing works a little more flexibly. Instead of using an electric signal to mean one or zero, the designers of these new chips want to make their computer's neurons talk to each other the way biological neurons do. To do this, you need a kind of precise electric current that flows across a synapse, or the space between neurons. Depending on the number and the kind of ion, the receiving computer neuron is activated in some way, giving you a lot more computational options than just your basic yes and no. This ability to transmit a gradient of understanding from neuron to neuron and have them all working together simultaneously means that neuromorphic chips could eventually be more energy efficient than our normal computers, especially for really complicated tasks. To realize this exciting potential, we need new materials because what we're using in our computers today isn't gonna cut it. The physical properties of something like silicon, for instance, make it hard to control the current between artificial neurons. It just kind of bleeds all over the chip with no organization. So a new design from an MIT team uses different materials, single crystalline silicon and silicon germanium layered on top of one another. Apply an electric field to this new device and you get a well-controlled flow of ions. A team in Korea is also investigating other materials. They use tantalum oxide to give them precise control over the flow of ions and it's even more durable. And another team in Colorado is implementing magnets to precisely control the way computer neurons communicate. These advances in the actual architecture of neuromorphic systems are all working towards getting us to a place where the neurons on these chips can learn as they compute. Software neural networks have been able to do this for a while, but it's a relatively new advancement for physical neuromorphic devices. And these experiments are showing promising results. Another leap in performance has been made by a team at the University of Manchester who have taken a different approach. Their system is called Spinnaker, which stands for Spiking Neural Network Architecture. While other experiments look to change the materials we use, the Manchester team uses traditional digital parts like cores and routers, connecting and communicating with each other in innovative ways. The UK researchers have shown that they can use Spinnaker to simulate the behavior of the human cortex. The hope is that a computer that behaves like a brain will give us enough computing power to simulate something as complicated as the brain, helping us understand diseases like Alzheimer's. The news is that Spinnaker has now matched the results we'd get from a traditional supercomputer. And this is huge because neuromorphic architectures offer the possibility of higher speed and more complexity for less energy cost. And with this new finding, we see that they're edging closer to the best performance we've been able to achieve so far. Overall, we're working towards having a better understanding of how the brain works in the first place improving the artificial materials we use to mimic biological systems, and creating hardware architectures that work with and optimize neural algorithms. Changing computer hardware to behave more like the human brain is one of a few options we have for continuing to improve computer performance and to get computers to learn and adapt the way humans do. While scientists make computers that work like brains, put your brain to use by building your very own website. Domain.com is awesome, affordable, reliable, and has all the tools you need to build a new website. They can fulfill all your website needs. They offer .com and .net domain names and intuitive website builders. They have over 300 domain extensions to fit your needs from .club to .space to .pizza. Take that first step in creating an identity online and visit domain.com. It looks like it's gonna be a wild ride ahead, you guys. 
I think you should probably subscribe to Seeker so that you can always know when something new and exciting happens as we progress along this brain mimicking path. And for even more on this subject, may I suggest you check out this video on neural networks. Thanks for watching.